to jump off of what you're saying about getting educated and smart cities as well, what Dr. Paul was talking about with 5G is what you're talking about with smart cities. And I hope everyone just want to help educate everyone that 5G is the new technology that is going to tie together the Internet of Things that will use and add to the electromagnetic environment and increase the frequencies we're exposed to. Um, as an example of what's happening here, um, and Environmental Health Trust, we've been tracking in different states these new bills that are being put forward to streamline, to make faster and easier the ability for companies to put the transmitters in communities. So you talked about Washington, D.C., which is a test city for 5G, and there are actually several test cities for 5G, and there are many people coming together, getting educated, and addressing their elected officials, and asking for this issue to be addressed, and for any new technology introduction to be safe, and to halt the uh, 5G installations. So just here in Montgomery County, actually, on Tuesday, they are going to be introducing a new zoning bill, which I believe, uh, and many others believe, is going to make it easier to put these transmitters in front of uh, homes. They've already passed something so that it can be in commercial areas. There are many letters written by scientists all over the world on this on Environmental Health Trust, which is ehtrust.org. We have uh, put them all together so that you can have access to them. And you can share them with your fellow architects, builders, and it, they also really concisely put together the research and the issue for policymakers. So I invite you to continue on this, but it's very important. Very good. Dr. Naj? Is a cell tower going up in your neighborhood? If it's not now, it may soon. Wireless carriers are installing millions of them across the country to enable the new, faster 5G cell phone technology. But tonight, Julie Watts asked the question you're not supposed to ask. Are there legitimate health concerns? It's keeping John Heestand up at night. This new pole outside his bedroom window where Verizon will soon install a next generation cell tower just feet from a school. This would be a big tower pushing out radiation outside of our bedroom window 24 hours a day, seven days a week for many years. It's called a small cell or distributed antenna system, similar to this one in San Francisco. The industry says they're safe. Many in Piedmont aren't convinced. Our daughter is a cancer survivor. 13-year-old Sophia has been one of many petitioning the city council to deny this cell tower and others. I'm also a brain cancer survivor and I am against the cell towers. I mostly talked about my cancer and how it affected me. But according to federal law, the city simply can't consider health concerns. It's outlined in this small section of a telecommunications act based on science from 1996 to turn your phone on or off back when this was the height of technology. But if cities do consider health, the cell companies can sue. So with few legal arguments to deny a cell tower, they're popping up outside bedroom windows and school campuses, despite objections from across the country. 5G can be a tremendous boom to California, but only if it can be put up quickly and easily. Hayward Assembly member Bill Quark co-authored legislation that would make it even harder for cities like Piedmont to object to a tower. You wouldn't have to go through the planning commission through the city council. The former NASA scientist says he may resurrect the bill recently vetoed by the governor. I know scientifically that putting up these cell phones, cell phone towers is safe. But the International Association of Firefighters disagrees. They began opposing cell towers on fire stations after firefighters complained of health problems. These firefighters developed symptoms. Dr. Gunnar Heuser conducted a pilot study on firefighters at a station with cell towers. And the symptoms included problem with memory, problem with intermittent confusion, problem with weakness. Heuser says their brain scans suggest even low-level RF can cause cell damage. And he worries about more vulnerable groups like kids. So we found abnormal brain function in all of the firefighters we examined. So, following lobbying by firefighters, Cork and his co-author exempted fire stations from their bill, 
making them one place cell companies couldn't put a tower. This is the first piece of legislation that I think anyone's aware of where somebody got an exemption because they were concerned about health. Did they tell you at all about the all study? All I know is that when the firefighters ask, you know, I do what they ask me to do. Because they're strong lobbyists? Yes. So if, say, school teachers and parents had a strong lobby and they asked you to pass something that would prevent these from going up near schools, would you do that? If I couldn't get the votes any other way. Firefighter and cancer survivor Tony Stefani notes. It's not only firefighters, it's the people that live in the general vicinity, vicinity of these towers. Current regulations don't take into account continuous low level exposure from these small cells 24 hours a day. More of these studies have to be done. There are 230 scientists from 41 countries who have apparently reviewed more than 2,000 peer reviewed studies and they're calling on the World Health Organization to do more studies. They're not convinced that, that this is safe. I think doing more studies is always a good thing. Do you think that maybe you should consider putting a pause on legislation that speeds up these towers until there's definitive evidence that there is no harm? We can do a lot of studies and there are people right now, believe it or not, who are sure the world is flat. In a statement, the wireless industry says it defers to experts when it comes to cell tower safety and says, according to government agencies, the scientific evidence shows no known health risk. But what about the unknown? Well, back in Piedmont, the he stands don't want to wait around to find out. We're going to get some meters and we're going to measure the, the microwave radiation today. And then when the cell towers go up, we can measure it and see how dangerous it really is. And he says if he has to, they'll move. For my daughter's health, definitely. Well, Julie reports Piedmont did block some cell towers and is now being sued. Meanwhile, new government research set to be published next month could radically alter the debate. It's expected to link RF radiation to health effects in lab rats. Probably the most important thing I did, I was involved as a young scientist in the committee that actually reviewed the data and recommended that there be no smoking on airplanes. You may be shocked to hear that it was even a question for science at the time, but it was. And when I look at what we know now about mobile phone radiation, I see some very interesting similarities. A growing number of prominent doctors and scientists are raising warning flags over radiation this morning and your kids could be facing a greater risk of exposure. I think the most important study is a study by the National Toxicology Program in a classic large carcinogenicity test, one of the largest ever performed, and for that matter, one of the most expensive. They found increased risk of the tumors, which we believe radiofrequency radiation is causing in man. Uh, particular tumors called schwannomas. In the rats, they were in the heart. In, in humans, they're often in the nerve, the ear nerve, the vestibular nerve. Cell phone providers say they follow all safety guidelines put into place by the FCC. The current FCC safety standard was developed nearly 20 years ago. The, the manufacturers actually tell people in the instruction manual, which I never read, to put, not to put the cell phone against your ear. It does say exactly that. There's a, the BlackBerry, for example, warns to keep your phone at least 0.98 inches away from the body when transmitting. With, uh, with an iPhone, for example, it's 5 eighths of an inch. At this point, the evidence has become sufficiently strong that cell phone radiation is a human carcinogen. A major development from California's Department of Public Health, high use of cell phones may be linked to certain types of cancer and other health effects, including brain cancer and tumors, lower sperm counts, headaches, and effects on learning, memory, hearing, behavior, and sleep. If it was a real problem, I would know. If it was a real problem, the government would protect us. How come I'm not hearing about this? They're all things I've heard when I give seminars. You know, I get up there and they say, oh yeah, if this was really a problem, they would have told us. I am they. I am a, you know, legitimate scientist and I am telling you.